Hey everyone, welcome to the webinar Using Data to Boost Sales this holiday season. My name is Mikkel, I'm the VP of Growth at Shaker, and with me today I have Ben, VP of Southeast Asia at Lexer. So thank you for joining, Ben. How's it going? Thanks, Mikkel. Um, pleased to be here. Yeah, all is all is well with me in Singapore. Thank you. Bit of a monsoon coming down, but that's that's pretty standard. Perfect. Let's let's get started. So before I hand over to Ben, I just want to give a brief introduction to Shaker. Uh, so Shaker is the creative hub for ROI-driven marketing teams, where we help brands boost their campaign performance with better, faster, and more cost-efficient creatives at scale. Uh, and we do this by fulfilling all creative needs in one central hub, where we offer creative services optimized for performance. Uh, we turn those custom creatives into templates so you can create fresh iterations on the fly, and our creative automation solutions enable you to scale creative production beyond human limitations. So that was a very quick shaker intro. Now over to Ben, who will share how you can use data to boost your sales this holiday season. Uh, so I'll stop sharing my screen and hand over to you, Ben. Okay, here we go. Um, thanks for joining, viewing everyone. Um, and thanks, Mikhail, for, again, for the invitation. Um, I guess going from the um the pretty creative side we're going into the into the data side of things um i'm hoping this is relevant and timely uh for for you guys as uh, i know the holiday season starts earlier and earlier every single year um so i wanted to show some applications of customer data um and, and a few tactical use cases of that customer data for for retailers and e-commerce businesses on how you can get better returns from your marketing campaigns um, and better sales effectively uh, during the holiday season. This is me. Um, so I am VP of Southeast Asia based in Singapore uh, for Lexa. Um, Lexa is headquartered in Melbourne, Australia, and we're also present in the US. If you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, I'm not particularly fussy. So feel free to, to scan the QR code and connect with me if you wanted to uh, just follow my posts or, or, or ping me a message. <clears throat> so we know holiday season is big. Um, and I'm just going to spend about maybe the first few minutes a little bit about the context of uh, holiday season and, and what Lexa is. And then we'll shift into the last 10 minutes or so, um, those, those five tactical use cases that I mentioned. Every single year, holiday e-commerce is, is, is higher than, than it has been before. Sorry, just got a call. Um, and we also know, especially you know, from, from my side, the Southeast Asia side, that it's growing quicker uh, than, than elsewhere in the world. Uh, so we also know from whether the retailers we speak to that the first half of the year hasn't been as successful as they, they would have hoped. So there's even more emphasis on, on the second half to, to meet their sales targets. But this year is slightly different as every year has been especially sort of through the covid phase and coming out of it um and this quote from from daniel sort of epitomizes that um consumers will spend we know that but they're likely to be more careful uh with their spending they will probably consider their purchases a little bit more doesn't necessarily mean that they'll buy the cheapest things um but they will be looking for something that has relevance has a bit of a story um, and there were probably um, maybe by fewer, fewer items uh, than they would in previous years. So who Alexa and what is what we call um, a customer data and experience platform? We know that great brands are built on great customer experiences. And you'll recognize a few of the brands on the right hand side there and probably associate them with brands that do strive to create great experiences for their customer. We are all about the data around the customers to build those great customer experiences. Um, we know that there is a lot of data and it is not easy to turn that into to great experiences. And pretty much every retailer and, and e-commerce brand out there does want to, um, but it is extremely difficult. So we transform the disconnected first party customer data um, into insights about the customer. So you and by you, it's generally marketers um, and business users can spend more time using that insights to create great experiences for the customer that drive sales, not just for the sake of it. 
um, and less time doing manual processes, chasing insights, chasing up people within the business to get you the insights or pulling together what's usually spreadsheets in, in a very manual effort to, to get the insights that you need. And thinking back to that quote from Daniel, customer centricity is more important than ever. And if customers are going to be more considered about their purchases, then being then knowing what customers will consider to purchase is going to be more important than ever. Um, retail and commerce are evolving at breakneck speed. Um, there's anyone can be a retailer these days, and clearly there's there's ones that, there's many that are doing really well with data and doing really well with customer experiences, and it's hard to keep up with those. Um, nothing is more important than putting the customer at the center of your business, and the fastest path to do that is making data accessible to, to all teams so that they can extract insights and so that it removes that friction between data and experiences. And I'm sure you've seen loads of stats like these. Um, consumers expect companies to deliver personalized interactions and they get frustrated when it doesn't happen. Um, so you really need to make those messages count. It's not about um, just sending as many messages as possible. It's about sending relevant messages um, so that you can stand out to the customer. And so the customer feels like you're actually using the information they've given you um, to, to endeavor to make some, some effort and to be relevant with that, with that marketing message. So why doesn't everyone do it? Why does not every retailer and e-commerce brand have a perfect um, customer-centric and, and personalized messaging system? It's because it's not easy. <laughs> it's really, really hard. Um, most of you and most retailers will, will, will probably empathize and, and connect with this. Everyone knows they may need to make more use of their own data. Um, third party cookie deprecation and iOS 14 um, have hampered marketing campaigns and people are turning to their own customer data assets to hit the targets which have not um, gone backwards at the same, at the same speed. But um, when you try and do it, it's difficult. We don't understand our customers well enough to deliver the right experience. Uh, our customer data tends to be in many, many places within a business. Um, so it's very difficult therefore to understand the customer when you're only getting a partial view. And even if you can bring it together, it tends not to be very easy to use because you don't have masses of resource but you do need data insights quickly. If you're running many marketing campaigns every day, every week, you need those insights quickly. And I would expect most of you, not all of you, do not have big, big data teams to draw on to get you those answers. If you do have data teams, they're probably busy working on other things. Um, and you will be waiting for days, if not weeks, for your requests um, to come back. Um, so you need to know yourselves which customers to focus on, what to say to them, so that you can be as relevant as possible to, to those customers. It's a lot of information on this slide. I'm not going to go through it all, um, but essentially this is our core product. Um, we call it a customer data and experience platform because we bring all of the customer data sources for retailers and e-commerce businesses together in one place, all their sales or their website behavior, um, customer surveys, email engagement, loyalty. And then we unify it and enrich it so that it creates as much insight as possible for marketers and business users in order to be able to segment their customer, segment their customers and gather insights quickly for the campaigns that they will run to those through a few of those that you can see there today. So we would connect and integrate into, into marketing channels, um, whether it's email, paid marketing, TikTok, Facebook, Google, um, or maybe even connecting that data to a website for personalized um, experience based on the customer that, that visits. So that was Lexa. That was the holiday season. And now we're going to talk about tactics that will help drive some profitability um, this, this holiday season. I'm going to whiz through five approaches that hopefully give you an unfair advantage. Um, they're generally all based on insights, timing, and personalization. Um, they're pretty short and fast and simple, um, but hopefully there's a few things that you can take away. Whether you're um, whether your brand has a customer data platform or not, some of these are hopefully still actionable um, in some way. 
I said it starts earlier every year, the holiday season. Um, and so a key part of that is building and targeting your prospect database for holiday sales. It says now we're already there. So probably if you haven't done it already, definitely now, but ideally um, pro probably a couple of months back. Um, every year for at least 10 years, customers have been starting their holiday buying earlier than they did the year before, um, both to stretch out their budgets um, and just to avoid the stress of holiday shopping. It gets bigger and a bit be better every year and customers spend more. So they, they start earlier and, and they spread out, spread out that spend. Um, a few ways you can attract new prospects before the holiday season gets underway. Um, a product, giveaways, discounts, and sweepstake competitions um, in, say, a paid social campaign where you can capture the emails of, of customers. Um, highlight the products or the product categories that already engage your high value customers. Um, so you know that you're looking to attract customers that are not just going to buy once or buy at heavy discount, um, but actually attract customers that want to buy your, your high margin and high value goods. These are great, not only for retargeting through holiday season, but for building lookalikes from. If you've got a high base of um, customers that you know are attracted to your, um, to your products that are more linked with high value customers, and they're great bases to use for further acquisition through things like um, Facebook, Google, uh, TikTok, lookalike campaigns. Another is um, identifying high value loyalty program members, uh, or advocates that write positive product reviews for lookalike audiences. So if you can isolate um, your advocates, isolate um, your groups of customers um, that are part of your loyalty program and, and you know are really high value, uh, again, these create these serve as a great base for creating segments for, for lookalikes for, for acquisition. Um, you can also look at the uh, the products and experiences that make them choose your brand and use that as part of the messaging when you're when you're building the the, the campaigns um, from from those lookalike audiences. Hero product analysis. I'm sure most of you are hearing hero product as a as a phrase for the first time. Um, a hero product is something we define it as the products which are bought first, which tend to correlate with customers that keep buying. Every single retailer will have products bought which are, which are bought first, which associate with customers that don't buy again. And they'll have products which, which when bought first associate with those repeat purchases. And it may not be the same as just the best selling products. So if you can identify prospects in your database um, who have yet to purchase from you, and you're looking to attract them um, with a product through paid channels, where you know you need to get a customer to purchase two or three or more times before you're actually getting return on that ad spend and you're making money from the acquisition of that customer, then using your hero products in the creative um, is a great way to balance the weight in your favor uh, that for those customers that you acquire, that they will go on to make repeat purchases. Um, in simple terms, on the quadrant on the right, you will have um, high customer volume. The, the top right is your hero product. They're people that um, products that are associated with high customer value, and you've got a lot of them. Similarly, you'll have high value niches where customers who buy them are so they're associated with high value customers, um, but maybe there's fewer of them. And then obviously at the bottom of the grid, you've got the underperformers, which you shouldn't use because they're associated with very low customer value and not many customers actually buy those first, as well as low value mass market, where you've got a lot of customers buying it, but they tend, they tend to um, turn into low customers, low value customers. Um, we do this for a lot of retailers um, where we do some analysis on who are your most valuable customers, which products did they buy first, and you can quickly then create a um, you know, a version of this matrix to identify uh, the, those hero products. And they are, they, it does give a very, very good return in terms of when you use those for your, for your acquisition campaigns. Number two, sort of low hanging fruit, really this one, and this is retargeting last year's buyers. Every retailer, e-commerce brand 
will have customers that bought from them during the holiday season last year. Um, these are great prospects to retarget um, with for holiday sales this year. It could be because they only buy from that brand or really only buy um, generally um, uh, during, during holiday season. Um, and it could also be because of the nature of the, um, the pricing during holiday season where the discounts be, um, put, put, put the brands more, more maybe luxury and expensive brands actually in their, in their affordable bracket. So starting with the easiest one, um, past holiday shoppers. Um, just look at people that bought at certain times last year, look at what they bought and which category of product they bought, um, retarget them probably through email, but if they've opted out of email, maybe through, through paid social with similar product categories, um, with, with holiday, holiday messaging, um, same and similarly for past products purchase. So regardless of industry, your customers will often return and purchase products within the same categories of products. Um, so if you can show, look at products within the same category based on what they bought of last year, even if you don't have those exact products still in stock, um, you can retarget those with, with categories. And once, what we do a lot with retailers is they create segments of, of customers that are bought in various categories. And you can actually look for overlap uh, between those segments. And where you see high levels of overlap is a great cross-sell opportunity um, to say for customers that might have bought from, say, product clothing or you know, you know um, skirts and dresses um, but actually might have actually overlapped with a, a few other products like accessories or hats or something like that um, and, and that's a that's a good way to get insight into which other categories might resonate with that audience now this is another one which is a bit of a precursor to holiday season um, but don't just wait until uh, the holiday season, you can keep seasonal buyers, customers that only tend to buy with your brand at holiday season engaged throughout the year. Um, this is a good way to prime the customer um, and, and create that sort of um, you know, brand recall throughout the year um, with things like gift cards or gift messaging um, so that they're more likely to be primed to convert uh, when you hit them with those promotional messages. It's not too late to do this for, for holiday sales sort of later in the year as well. Number three, um, and this is obviously a huge one during holiday season, is how you can identify gifters, people that are buying for other people, versus self-rewarders, people that are buying for themselves. Um, now, there are, there are a few ways to, to identify gifters. Uh, you can look at the gender of the customer, and this only works for some brands, obviously, for things like fashion, jewellery, um, uh, def definitely relevant um, what gender are they and what products are they buying? Now, for those that don't know the gender of their customers, we actually try and infer the gender um, through using some predictive models over the first name of a customer. Certainly knows a Ben, probably knows a Mikhail. Names like Alex and Sam that are unisex, hard to tell. Um, so it's not perfect, uh, but it but it gives a good boost and a great way to identify um, who, who are the customers that are female and buying male items. Um, if you don't know the gender or you're not able to, we're not able to infer it, um, sending surveys post-purchase is a really good way to get some insight from the customer. Um, a customer likes to be asked if they were happy with the purchase, if there's, if there's anything that more that can be done. Uh, and a short survey, and if you, if you put in a, an option for them to, to provide their gender um, and given that they complete it, you can then capture the, uh, the, the gender through there as well. Um, now, we offer that as part of the product so that when someone does answer, whether they're male or female, it automatically populates against the customer profile. Um, but even if it's done maybe manually or through a different mess method, if you can link that back to the, the profile that made the purchase, then you can start to identify gifters there as well. You can also do so and start to segment based on purchase patterns. Um, are they only buying it, you know, at more traditional gifting times of year? Um, and people who buy gift cards are obviously gifting. Why would you buy a gift card for yourself? <laughs> so if people are buying gift cards, they're a, they're a very easy way to put them into the, into the gift card category. People that are self-rewarders are also great to, to target with um, treat yourself messages and as well as gifters. Um, so you can target non-gift buyers with that reason why they 
like to like to um, treat themselves with personalized treat yourself messages. Um, you can. It's very important to obviously use the correct product in that messaging. Um, we have ways that we can actually look at predictions based on what products were bought in the past and what products are that customer more likely to buy in the future. Um, so that you can make those treat yourself messages as relevant as possible with the gift that you're looking to um, to push to the customer. And you can also target gifters with a message saying, treat yourselves. Um, we had a client uh, in the US that ran a big Black Friday promotional um, uh, campaign. They attracted a lot of females that were buying outdoor hiking wear for, for the men in their lives. They quickly followed up with a, you've got him squared away, why not treat yourself? And they got a seven times return on ad spend with all of the wives, daughters, sisters, mothers are like, yeah, you're right. I have done something good for him. I should I should treat myself and I will. <laughs> so you can also follow up with targeting gifters to persuade them to, um, to, to use the karma of the gift to treat themselves as well. Number four, massively relevant and topical around um, holiday season is separating your core customers from discount junkies. Not that discount junkies is a, is a, is a bad thing at all, um, but you want to protect your margin. That's the most important thing when you're looking to, to ship products over the, the holiday season. Every brand will have people that only really buy at discount from them. Um, they are traditional discount buying customers. They're always looking for, for a bargain or their products are only in their price range when they're, at, when they're at heavy discount. They will also have customers that don't really care about discounts. They buy, they buy things when they want it or they actually want to buy it near a full price. They see heavy discounts as something which is unwanted or is maybe not premium. Um, so messaging to full price buyers um, around discounts can, can often not um, resonate with them and not connect with them. Now, the core margin, uh, the core um, objective here for retailers is to protect that margin. Um, and so if you can put your customers who buy at heavy discounts into a discount buyer segment, you have your full price buyers into your full price segment, um, you can adjust the messaging accordingly, as you can see on the screen, which is going to connect with them. Um, and you would also use timing of messages. Throughout the holiday season, discounts tend to get higher um, based, on, based on remnant inventory and how sales are going. We expect that to happen a lot this year. Um, so you would want to hit the full price buyers potentially a little earlier while the products are still at lower discounts. Um, and then the discount buyers later on when you're left with the discount items. Lastly, um, you capture so many customers during the holiday season. There's more digital marketing dollars spent on, on customer acquisition and more purchases made than any other time. Um, capitalizing on your new customers throughout that season, when the season is over and throughout the season, is so important. A person who makes a second purchase from a brand, so they might make their first purchase through the holiday season, um, if you can get them to make that second purchase, they're nine times more likely to make a third purchase than they are to go from a first to a second. So that second purchase is critical for brand recall and brand loyalty um, and to make the return on the ad spend on acquiring that customer in the first place. The follow up to the second purchase is, is, is critical to then driving increased profitability from, from that ad spend. <clears throat> It's a little bit of a complicated table on the on the page. I apologize. Um, you don't need to read all of this. Um, now, within our platform, we can look at customers who purchase a certain type of product and see what they normally buy second. So here you can see that um, it doesn't really matter about, about the product types, but people that buy knits, the most commonly bought second order is knits again. So the, the, the sort of brightest red, here, the heat map is showing what they usually buy by second. Um, and the, the lighter, the, the, the darker the red, effectively, the, 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 the more likely it is that the customer or the more amount of customers on that first purchase who make the second purchase. So if you'll notice here quite quickly, for each product class on the left, there's a different second purchase buying behavior. Some are definitely going to buy 
um, that thing again, maybe in a different color or the same. Others will branch into other categories and the categories that they do branch into is different for all of these. So understanding when someone, when what someone who buys knits or casual jackets or sneakers buys first and having a sense of which categories you should put in the uh, email campaigns or paid campaigns to um, have the best chance of connecting with that customer for what they might want to buy next uh, is, is critical because it won't be the same for everyone. Once these campaigns are set up, they can be automated. You'll have segments for people that buy knits first which creatives you show, show those and the same through those, those most commonly bought um, first product categories. And this is an example of that. So an example of that automation. So someone might buy a mountain bike um, and you will know what sort of accessories, what sort of things people come back to, to purchase. Might think be things like water bottle holders and upgrades on brakes, these sort of things. Um, so set, giving a message, which is a mountain bike is for life, not just for Christmas. We hope you love the bike. Here are some hydration products we think you might find useful um, is, a, is an example that you can have an automated post-purchase campaign to drive that, that second sale and, and maximize the, the investment in the marketing dollars to acquire that customer in the first place. You can also use those forms and surveys that I mentioned earlier. Um, so follow up with the customer after that first purchase to understand more about them. Get, so you don't know a lot about that customer off one purchase. Um, so actually follow up to uh, understand their satisfaction with the purchase um, and giving them some incentive or discounts on that second purchase through giving them some information about you. Maybe some of the products they would like to see in the future. Some of the reasons that they actually made that purchase in the first place is great context to, to take for your, for your follow-up campaigns to be as relevant and personalized to that customer, as well as give them a reason to come back and make that second purchase. Putting it all together, in summary, build the prospect database early, reach those customers um, and, and retarget last year's buyers uh, who've purchased in the past, segment into gifters versus self-indulgent rewarders, uh, and follow up with, with relevant messaging. Split your customers based on the discounts that they uh, purchase at, low versus discount, low versus high discount buyers, and make sure you capitalize on those new customers that you acquire during the holiday season. Thank you guys. Um, you can scan here to, to follow the Alexa page and follow our posts. We have lots of retail based information, probably a lot of things I've said today as well, as well as others. Um, thank you, Mikhail. Um, pleasure, pleasure to, to talk to you guys today. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. It, it's so exciting to see how you can shape customer experience with, with great data. Uh, I think a lot of people will be really inspired to go, go get started and use the data they have or gather data through, through a company like Lexer, platform like Lexer. Uh, so definitely encouraged to to reach out to uh, Ben uh, after this presentation to to hear how they can help uh, you shape your uh, customer experience during during this uh, holiday season. So thanks again, uh, and uh, to everyone listening, thank you for joining, uh, and see you out there. Thank you, Mikhail. Very kind. Thanks, guys. <laughs>